Hey, what's going on everyone? Big Breeze channel here. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. Um, this is a quick, just kind of uh, uh, explanatory video for args and quarks, asterisk args and double asterisk quarks. And I remember that three or four years ago, I've explained those concepts or those two principles uh, in Python programming language, of course, in two separate videos. Now, I remember that those videos didn't have much views, but really it doesn't matter if any of my videos are useful even to one person that means the world to me indeed okay so very briefly i'm going to tell you the difference between args and quarks uh, but first let's open the python interpreter and let me show you actually a different uh, let's start by the name actually what is args and what is quarks right that, that looks odd if you'll show this to any of your friends they will tell you you're a genius, right? You know, a complicated code. What what's that means? Mysterious, right? But it's actually, it's very easy. Um, the arg stands for arguments, and quarks stands for keyword arguments, right? But before that, let me show you what is an argument, right? So we need to start the story from the the top. So let's say we want to create a function that adds two numbers, and this function is uh, returning, for example, this x and y, right? A simple function that you can give it two numbers and it gives you the result, right? The addition. Okay, so very cool. We have two numbers here, three and four. Um, by the way, the difference between argument and parameter is very important um, to understand. Programmers use both words interchangeably, but you need to understand those little nuances. You need to understand them. When you define your function, when you define your function here, you are actually setting the parameters for your function. So when you're building the function, you're setting the parameters for that function to be used later by the user where he is going to add to that function the arguments. So the parameters, when you define the function, the arguments when you actually invoke the function. All right, so back to arguments. So these are two arguments here, great. But what if we want more than two arguments? What if we want A, B, C, D, and N number of numbers, right? What we can do? Here comes the asterisk args into play. This is your actually uh, saver. It's going to save you the headache of modifying the code every time you want to add an element, you want to add a parameter to your function. This is a dynamic kind of um, setting to your function and tells you basically you can add whatever number of arguments that you want to add to your function. Doesn't matter, I don't care. Let's see that in action. Let's say that we want to create a function that's greeting people. So I'm going to define normal function as always. And then instead of saying X and Y, I'm going to say asterisk args. Okay, till now it's clear. We have asterisk args, which means we have an undefined number of arguments that the user can pass to the function and then display the result. The result of args will be in the form of a tuple. tuple are two parentheses inside them the different items okay this is a tuple this is a compound data type and it exists in many programming languages not only python all right so uh let's say now we have different names we want to greet each name so i'm going to iterate through the names so i'm going to say for name in args by the way this is not forcibly being asterisk args it could be asterisk names, asterisk fruits, asterisk cars, whatever. But just for the sake of simplicity, I want to keep it asterisk args to be clear for everyone. Right, so for name in args, I want to iterate through those arguments that the user is going to pass to the function. So what I want to do is I want to print in a format string. I will say hello, oops, hello, and whatever the name is. Right, and let's just shut the double quotes, the parentheses, and this is our function. Now, if you will do greet and then pass different names, let's say Anoop, let's say Anya, 
um, let's say for example um, Kalina right let's say uh, Nancy right we have four different names and we will see what will happen when we will hit enter aha uh -huh. good now you have greeted everyone independently hello Anoop, Anya, Kalina and Nancy so any number of arguments that you're going to give to your function it doesn't matter the function is going to execute them it's a dynamic type of you know parameter that you can set to your function and this basically tells it to the user hey i don't care about the, the amount of the, the, the arguments that you're going to pass to that function i'm going to print them and i'm going to make you happy All right so this is the asterisk args now we need to remember one important thing that the arguments passed to the function that's utilizing the asterisk args are, are called positional arguments or um, non-keyword arguments positional arguments why because each argument of those has their own position they are indexed the zero position the one position the two position the three position right based on the zero indexing system in programming so anoop has index zero anya one kalina two nancy three so these are called positional arguments right non-keyword arguments now let's go ahead and see how keyword arguments are different well actually they're not so different basically instead of a tuple you will have a dictionary you will have a key value pair kind of you know data printed to you right so let's see that in action first of all it's written this way double asterisk quarks right so these are the keyword arguments that you should pass to your function to do whatever you want and let's say for example that i want to print the total score of uh, some students in in, uh, in the exam for example so let's say for instance that i want to create a function called um, total score or maybe just score right this function is going to take double asterisk quarks it can be double asterisk students for example and it's going to work fine right so uh, double asterisk again quarks and let's shut the parentheses colon indent and i will print uh, whatever those keyword arguments are being passed to the function then just for fun i'm going to show you that this is actually a dictionary right so let's see if i'm going to use that function score function and let's say for instance we have um mina he got a score of five um bob he got a score of six and lucy got a score of seven or nine okay whatever oh i made a mistake somewhere okay let's do that uh, function again i apologize guys let's print that again quarks now let's call that function again score and let's see what we'll have okay so you can see here that we have mina equal to five bob equal to six lucy equal to nine equal to means that the key which is called mina has a value which is five the key which is called bob has a value of six and the key which is called lucy has a value of nine and this is a dictionary type of data okay so that was very important to show so that's one thing you can do with keyword arguments um another thing you can do with keyword arguments is that you can actually do some math so let's say for instance that i want to we have some books and we want to know the number of books that we have so let's say num books this is the name of the function and this time i'm going to use books like that not keyword um, not quarks sorry um so initially the total books is going to be zero and i will say for book in books right dot value because we will have numerical value right so you can do dot items you can do dot value it depends on what you want 
um, the books, don't forget, they, these are the keyword arguments that you, the user, are going to pass it to the function. So, um, dot values, by the way, not value, and don't forget the uh, parentheses, right? So, while iterating through books dot values, I want the um, I want the total basically to be incremented by the books that are being added. So I'm going to do total plus equal to the book. Right. And finally, we can return that total. So return total. So now let's see if we'll do print um, num books like that. And I will pass here, let's say, for instance, it. That's uh, we have, for example, five copies. We have life of pi. This is one of my favorite books. We have 10 copies, for instance, and we have, um, I don't know, anything um, idiot for Dostoevsky. We have four copies only, right? Uh, we have an error. Okay, yeah, I uh, apologize for that, guys. I should, uh, I should have done like that. Life off. Bye. Um, and I forgot, <laughs> apologize, and I forgot parentheses. Right, we have 19 books, 5 plus 10 plus 4. Alright guys, so let me give you a final example. I apologize, the, the last example was a little bit messy. As I told you, nothing is scripted in this video, so I really apologize. Let's go to Python quickly. Let's create a function um, that's going to print data of student, of employee, for example. Let's call it employee, let's make it imp data, for example. So instead of me doing quirks like that, I'm going to do data. Right, because these are the keyword arguments that I'm going to pass in the function. Each key has a corresponding value to it. So, for instance, a name will be whatever the name is, age, age, whatever the age is, and so on. So that's going to print the employee's data essentially, and that's awesome because no matter how the the, the fields, if we'll think about it like a database. In the table, if you want to increase the fields, you don't have to modify the original function. You can simply add those um, those arguments which represent the fields in the table. So uh, let's say, for instance, that uh, we want to iterate through the data. So we'll say for. Now we can say for item in whatever. We need to do for key and value in data or quarks, quote unquote, dot items. Um, remember the last example we have used values, this time we'll use items because uh, they are not merely um, uh, numerical values, we can have any data type, we can have booleans, strings, whatever. So the items inside the keyword arguments, we want to print them in the form of dictionary. Right, so let's print that, let's do print uh, in f string. Right. And that's it. Now, if you will take the employee data function and we'll pass to it the name, let's say Ajit, um, our friend from Delhi. Uh, let's say age is 30. Let's say um, phone number or maybe phone, just phone is equal to 225533, whatever. That's an arbitrary number. And the last argument, let's say section, and he's working in production. Aha, uh -huh, take a look at that. We have name Ajit, age 30, the phone, and the section printed neatly. All right, so this was the arguments and the keyword arguments explained in Python. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have problems understanding things like uh, generators, decorators, all of those advanced concepts, please let me know. I've explained that before um, more than once, but I'm happy to repeat again if you want. Thank you so much, guys, for watching, and I will see you in the next video.